You're probably sick of my face on telly by now. It's not the living wage that was campaigned for. Like Lenin said, there are some decades yes. where nothing happens. We see Matt Hancock age by 20 years. Jeremy Corbyn gets into power, all these billionaires will flee. Well, I don't take that view. There's actually feminist Marxist theorists who write about... winding people up, probably, on the right. I love that you've come to this. I'm so disappointed. I'm absolutely pro somebody like Obama. I'm not pro Obama. I've been a critic of Obama. I'm a critic of the Democratic Party. Because I'm literally a co- But there's one thing I literally never get asked to talk about, and that's Islamophobia in the Conservative Party. Why? Earlier this year, it was found in a survey by YouGov that 60% of Tory party members think that Islam is a threat to Western civilization. 54% think Islam is a threat to the British way of life. And a previous poll found two-thirds of Tory supporters think that there are parts of the UK governed by Sharia law. And it's not just randos in the grassroots that are the problem. This week, The Guardian published a dossier of Tory councillors who couldn't help but soil themselves at the thought of having to share a country with people from a different religion. Trevor Hales, a parish councillor from San Diego, took to Twitter in a froth because apparently my Islamic brethren are the enemy within and wrote that spineless governments had sold us to slavery of Muslims. Ooh, uh. Beverly Dunlop, a counselor in Bournemouth Christ Church and Poole, posted in Facebook groups saying, I hate to ban anything really, but I suggest we start with mosques. There's Tory priorities for you, fracking good, places of worship, very bad indeed. Hang on, she doesn't know that we're allowed to pray anywhere, right? Like it doesn't have to be a mosque. And Malcolm Griffiths, a Conservative councillor in Redcar, approvingly quoted a Dutch fascist who said, the genetic damage done to the Muslim gene pool since their prophet allowed first cousin marriages 1,400 years ago is most likely massive. For comparison, here's what the alleged genetic pinnacle of Western civilization looks like. But it's not just local councillors and envelope stuffers mouthing off about Muslims. This form of racism goes right to the top. Barely sentient, sexually incontinent mark, Boris Johnson refused to back down over referring to Muslim women who wear the niqab as letterboxes and bank robbers in his Telegraph column earlier this year, despite his comments being linked to a 375% direct increase in Islamophobic hate incidents. Thing is, Conservative Party Islamophobia isn't just distasteful or downright offensive, it has huge implications for how Muslims are treated by the state. Michael Gove's views on Islam were described by Tory peer Saeed Awasi as deeply, deeply worrying. Baroness Wasi suggested that David Cameron had been radicalised by Gove's book Celsius 7-7, in which Michael G. Unit's selective use of polling was used to indicate that extremist views were commonplace amongst British Muslims. Speaking at the time of Donald Trump's Muslim ban, she said, if Michael had been left to run this anti-extremism policy in the way he would run it, we would be seeing the kind of things that we're now seeing in the White House. And despite Sajid Javid bouncing all would-be Tory leaders into agreeing an inquiry into their party's Islamophobia problem during the contest this summer, it's since been kicked into the long grass. Should we, should we have an external investigation of the Conservative Party into Islamophobia, guys? A few days ago, Michael Gove couldn't tell the Today programme whether an inquiry would be independent or internal, and suggested it wouldn't even focus specifically on Islamophobia at all. So why don't the media take Islamophobia in the government as seriously as they do pockets of bigotry elsewhere? Simple, because they're complicit in it too. Earlier this year, the Muslim Council of Britain launched the Centre for Media Monitoring. And in their debut report, which analysed over 10,000 articles and clips, they found evidence of widespread and systematic bias against Muslims in media representations. I've said it before and I'll say it again, 59% of all articles analysed and 43% of all broadcast found that Muslims were associated with negative behaviours, with terrorism, unsurprisingly, being the most frequently associated theme. The most biased outlets tended to be from religious or right-wing print publications, and the worst TV programming tended to be topical news and investigations programming. Interestingly, national broadcast media tended to be much more negative about Muslims than regional media, 
leading the report's authors to suggest that while on the day-to-day -day and local level, Muslim communities aren't actually that different from their non-Muslim neighbours, in national representations their portrayal is skewed to suggest that our presence in this country is some kind of existential threat. And that means that anyone who is perceived to be an ally of Muslim communities in the UK, particularly if they're on the left, gets tarred as a terrorist sympathiser, which in turn allows Islamophobia to be laundered through the prism of anti-socialist sentiment. And then stuff like this happens. I thought you'd be wearing your Islamic jihad scarf. Well done. Who's going to be the first terrorist invited to the House of Commons when you're Prime Minister? It's not just the Tory party who give the impression that Muslims are an easy target for discrimination. In relentlessly enforcing a double standard when it comes to racism, the establishment media are letting the public know that Islamophobia is an acceptable form of racism, just so long as it suits the purposes of those in power. So, if you're wondering why the media don't seem to care about Tory Islamophobia, the answer is simple. They're up to their fucking necks in it themselves. Oh, if you like this video, you know what to do. Go to support.navaramedia.com and make a one-off donation or subscribe for the equivalent of one hour of your wage per month. And if you're a bit hard up for cash this month because, I don't know, Islamophobes robbed you or something, that's fine. Just share this video. Make sure that you're following us on Twitter, on Facebook and subscribed on YouTube. See you next time.